Welcome in everybody, my name is Sweet Phil, and today right here I'm making a video in response and answering one of the most frequently asked questions on my recent videos with Diablo 2 Resurrected coming out. I'm getting asked all the time, what types of items do we want to look for and pick up early on in Diablo 2? Probably in like normal, I assume is what they mean. And what items do we just completely want to skip over and not even worry about? There's a lot of new and returning players, people either that played Diablo 3 and now they're playing Diablo 2 Resurrected when it comes out here, or people who played Diablo 2 back when they were like 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, and they're coming back to play it for the nostalgia's sake. And there's a lot of like super basic questions like this. This is the most frequently asked one, and it kind of makes sense because if you don't really remember or if you haven't played Diablo 2, it can be a little bit confusing not understanding exactly what you want to get. So today right here, I'm, it's kind of a guide of sort of the early on in normal items that you want to pick up and the things you actually want to do something with because there can be a lot of garbage out there in regards to items. So if you get anything out of the video, just hit that like button for me and subscribe up if you never want to miss any of the Diablo 2 resurrected content. So yeah, let's get after it. So I'm going to try to describe exactly what you want to pick up and what you don't want to pick up in the proper amount of detail because I know there are a lot of new and returning players that would like a little bit more description. That's kind of the idea I got from all the comments on my previous videos here. So it's going to be very uh, informative, maybe a little bit dry low on the editing and wow factor, but I'm going to try to get you as much of the information that I possibly can. Now I got a good example in my inventory here of the stuff you want to pick up. This is going to be right in act one and act two stuff you want to pick up and really you want to sell stuff to vendors to get gold because you're going to be just absolutely chugging potions non-stop you're not going to have a lot of health you're not going to have a lot of mana but you're going to have to cast a bunch of spells in order to kill stuff and you're going to be getting hit a lot so some stuff that you want to sell right off the bat some of the best stuff is some of these throwing things like throwing knives um, and throwing axes if you can find them Right off the bat, throwing knives are going to be the one you're looking for because they only take up two slots in your inventory. You can sell them for 480 and then you can buy a bunch of little potions here. And I'm playing on my idea. This is regular Diablo 2 with an HD widescreen mod and a loot filter. That's why it just says health H1, so the lowest health potion right there. So, But yours will say, you know, the minor health potion. Those only cost 30 With that gold there, you can get, you know, scrolls. You can get your tombs eventually after you sell more stuff. Um, so that's the first thing you want to look for is any of these throwing stuff. Next, you want to look for any of the throwing potions here. Strength and gas potions are good to use early on on a barbarian, actually. But also, they are a good thing to sell. Um, these right here aren't as good. The fomenting, only 72. But of course, you got to buy them back for 600. Jeez, what a ripoff. But you notice they only take up one slot, and you get 460 gold for them. Strength and gas potions are absolutely amazing. To sell to vendors and obviously uh, rings and amulets any of that stuff is great to sell to vendors too um, if you find something good to use obviously you're gonna want to throw it on and use it but if you didn't like if you find a 16 to stamina amulet it's not really worth using you're gonna want to just go ahead and sell that to whatever vendor you can to get the gold early on here we got any type of gems you find and also I don't have one here I should have one but just for an example, but any runes that you find, the runes are going to be needed for rune words, and they're going to be super sought after. Pretty much every single one is sought after, especially in the first few days of Diablo 2 at a launch. But definitely any single gem you find and any single rune gems, you can use them for making like lower level cube recipes, or you can take three of the same exact thing. Like let's say I had three chipped diamonds here. I could cube them together and they would turn into a flawless. If I had three flawless diamonds, they would then cube together into a normal one. Keep going, you know, extrapolate that out, and eventually you could get a perfect one in normal even. And that's what I usually end up doing. I usually end up getting a perfect, hopefully, amethyst in normal. And I don't have one here, but you can get a caster belt I use on a ton of stuff. Now, and next thing you want to look for is other stuff you can sell, and that's going to be anything that's class specific. You see, just because it says one to cleansing on it, it sells for over 4,000 gold, which is absolutely amazing. Any of the barb helms, the druid helms, or anything like this necromancer wand here. We've got up here a sorceress orb. They're going to sell for a ton of gold, especially if they have any skills on them, like any of this stuff. 
you get just a ton of gold for it. If you're lucky enough to find a circlet, those will obviously sell for a ton too. Beyond stuff that you're going to sell, the stuff you're going to pick up and use are kind of the stuff you're going to want to buy. Uh, different potions, mana, and health, are, you're definitely going to want to pick up all those you can find because you just chug them non-stop. Also, stamina potions here, those are going to be your best friend early on because you never want to run out of stamina when you're down in like the underground passage, for example, because you can get stuck super easy, get some archers hit, and you're going to get taken out. If your stamina gets way, 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 way down, you can chug yourself a stamina potion. It'll shoot all the way back to the top. And for a period of time here, you your stamina bar will not go down. Stamina potions, like I said, they're going to be your best friend early on. Some of the rings and stuff you find early on that you're going to want to use. Here's a good example. Any caster is going to want to find faster cast rate rings like this. You only have to be level 3 in order to use it. And cast rate is super good early on because the breakpoints are so close together. If you're a melee character, perhaps. If you find a life leech ring, you see this one requires level 10. That's going to be great. That way you replenish your life as you are attacking. Early on, you just kind of throw on the best thing you can find, no matter what it is. You can see maybe an 8 to fire res ring, you throw that on, or any of the resistances pretty much. But if it's something that's not really going to help you, I'll just go ahead and sell it, and that way you have enough gold to buy more potions, or later maybe get yourself a deli staff. So the examples I have here for charms that you want to keep early on these are much, much higher level. I, I don't have a bunch of lower level stuff here, unfortunately, but anything you can find that has life on it is definitely going to be useful, or anything that has resistances on it. Fire and lightning resistance are the most important. Poison res isn't as important because your life will drop slowly over time. You always have time to recover or time to run away. And the cold resistance, you're not going to take as much cold damage because... Monsters in Diablo 2 just don't do a lot of cold damage. It's a lot of lightning from things like souls or things that are lightning enchanted. Or fire damage because, I mean, you're running around in hell. Obviously, they're casting fire spells on you. If you're a melee character, maybe you can find some stuff that has max damage and attack rating on it like that. That'll help you out a bunch. And obviously, if you find any of the small charms that have all res on them, that's absolutely amazing. A couple other good examples of things you want to look for is if you find any two-socketed helms because then you can make lore in and that is a good item for pretty much any character because it'll give you the one all skill a lot of times i won't necessarily go that way because i like getting magic fine in my helm but lore is an option that a ton of people love putting on their characters and it takes the two open sockets and then there's a two open socketed armor you want to make stealth with that tall f and that is going to be the go-to for every single character a lot of times you'll make stealth early on and you'll use it all the way through hell until you find something better like a Viper Magi or a K Hagens or all different kinds of shaft stop. Who knows what you'll find that help your character out, but really a stealth in a two socketed armor. But actually here is a great learning experience. Right here I got a blue leather armor that has two open sockets. Do not go to a vendor and buy a blue mechanics armor that has two open sockets. If you put a runer in this, it will not work here's a better example of what you want it is a white one with the two open sockets that way if you put a rune word in it it will actually work and i'll show you one more time the difference see this is a magic armor that if it was identified and then has two open sockets in it do not make a rune word in that this is what you want to make your stealth in a white armor it doesn't have to be this particular style of one a studded leather armor it can be any but i'm just showing make sure you do it in a white one so a lot of the stuff I told you to pick up, you're just going to be selling. It's the stuff that takes up a little bit of inventory space, but you can sell for a lot of gold. Because a lot of the stuff that you pick up in ID, you're not going to be in normal long enough to ID enough stuff for it to actually be good. So what you want to do is, like I said, take those gold to buy potions. And also, there's going to be those rune word bases, like I said. If you come over to Charcy here, this is where you can find some of the rune word bases. Um, right here, boom, I found a two-socketed studded leather armor. Make sure you do not buy a l armor that is blue like this, but it's a mechanics one like I showed you a second ago. You can find them in here. They're going to be rune word bases like this for a two-socketed armor that you can make stealth in. But sometimes it'll be the mechanic like I showed you a second ago. Do not buy that one. And then also from Charcy here, there aren't any here right now, but you can get two open socketed helms also in order to make your lore in. So this is... From Charcy, remember, you can get a stealth armor that you can buy for reasonably cheap and a helm to make lore. And if you're not making either one of those rune words, you could always just stick some gems in these to add. Rubies will obviously add life. 
the sapphires will add mana and stuff like that or for a helm another good option is you could stick a couple tier runes in it if you find them each one of those gives you two to mana after each kill which later on isn't going to be a huge big deal but when you're casting a spell that costs four to mana and you get four to mana after each kill i don't feel like i need to do the math for you there then really early on also you can see i'm in act two now you can talk to far over here and you can get for armor you come down here and buy this belt uh, this belt will actually give you more open slots than if you just had a regular sash from Act 1. It'll give you three open slots. And I'll just go ahead and buy one right here and I'll show you real quick. So this is just normal Act 2 and you already can have three open slots to hold this many potions. The next thing you can look for here is you can look for a three open socket shield, which you're not going to necessarily use right now. You could plug gems or jewels or runes into it in order just to help you out. But a three socketed shield that you can get from here, you can use later, use Ral or Tal to make an ancient pledge. You can make it earlier on, but in act five, when you rescue the barbarians on Ariad Summit, you actually get those exact three runes from, I don't really remember the guy's name, but you get that those three runes in order to make ancient pledge. And you can make it with the shield you can buy right here from fire in act two. Obviously you can look around at vendors also, maybe you can find something that has uh, some other thing on it that you need, such as, I don't know, you could buy this three open socketed armor right here, plug some rubies in it, that can be the armor that you use on your lower level mercenary, because that'll add a bunch of health and really increase the survivability. Another thing you can look for is you can find socketed flails, that's going to be one of the things that you want for barbarians, because you can put rune words into these that are maces in order to make your barbarian even better. Another thing you want to look for and hopefully find along the way, usually you're finding them Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, but you want to find pole arms that have three or four open sockets early on. If you do Ith LF, you can make yourself a steel in a pole arm. I believe that can go in actually any weapon, but that's good for your Act 2 mercenary. You've seen mine walking around right here. Or Later, if you get the four open sockets, you can make yourself an insight, Ral Tier Tal Soul. And just remember, I put right next to it here, just so you don't make this mistake. There is a difference between these two right here. You see how this one says spear class and this one says polearm class. Do not make that mistake and try to get a four open socketed spear and try to make yourself an insight for your mercenary. It, it will not work. Make sure it is a polearm class weapon. As you can see, a lot of this stuff that I'm recommending that you pick up, you're actually just going to sell to vendors in order to get gold. Because early on, a lot of the gear doesn't really help you out a ton. Really what it is, is it's using your skills. And using your skills is going to use up mana. Or if you're a melee character, you're getting up close to the monsters and you're going to lose a bunch of health. So you're going to be chugging potions either way. And also, you're going to want to use a bunch of stamina potions so you can keep up with the full party. If you do pick up an ID, any of this stuff, let's say your sorceress, you'd ID a sorceress orb, and it's got skills on it that's going to help your character out by all means, and I do encourage you, definitely wear that item. Hope this video is nice and informative for the new and returning players here. So if you do get anything out of the video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe up so you never miss any of the Diablo 2 resurrected content. Peace out, YouTube. Hopefully I catch you next video, and do not forget, you better keep slaying.